Hi, hope you guys are all doing fantastic. Welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, we'll discuss about root canals, root canal classification, and also in brief, we'll look into the number of root canals that are present in various teeth. Does the number of root canals correspond to the number of roots or are there any exceptions? So these topics will be the focus of this video. I hope you guys are ready and looking forward to it. Let's go ahead without any delay. So as you can see here, we have various configurations of root canals. But before we get into these configurations, as you know, root canal is a pulpal space which is extending in the radicular portion of a tooth. The pulpal space which is present in the coronal portion of a tooth is called as pulp chamber. Whereas the same pulpal space which is extending from the root canal orifices towards the apical foramen is called as root canal. Right, so this is a basic nomenclature I'm sure you're all uh, aware of. But when it comes to accessory canals and lateral canals, we do have a confusion. So let me clarify that by putting forth the following statement and you guys let me know whether it is right or wrong. All lateral canals are accessory canals, but all accessory canals are not lateral canals. Do you think this statement is true or do you think it's false? If you think it's true, why do you think it's true? You can let me know in the comment section below. So, before we go ahead with the classification, one more thing which I wanted to highlight is the presence of apical foramen. So, the main canal exits the canal or exits the tooth through a foramen called apical foramen. Whereas the accessory canals or lateral canals, they exit the tooth via these accessory foramen, right? So, again, the basic terminology. So, vertice, veins, and there are still numerous other classifications which are available. So, why do we need this classification of root canals? Because not all root canals are straight in nature or straight in orientation. Not all root canals have a circular cross section. So, in fact, when it comes to reality in any tooth, the root canal shape is mostly complex, irregular. And as per the studies, I'm sure you know this, but let me just remind you, when you complete biomechanical preparation, around 20 to 40 percent or even more of the surface area of a root canal is being left untouched. But still, root canals are working. So, the study which I have given now clearly demonstrates the complexity of the root canal morphology. It's not just like a funnel shape. It is so complex, so irregular in outline that even after thorough biomechanical preparation, as per various studies, almost 20 to 40 percent or even more of surface area of the root canal is left untouched, right? Now, so we have some classifications mentioned in Grossman, as you can see. We have a classification given by Vertice, who has given this way back in 1970 after studying around 200 maxillary premolar specimens in specific maxillary second premolar specimens. And then we have a classification of root canals given by V. And then we have another classification which is based on the cross-sectional shape of a root canal. So why do we need this classification? Again, for communication purpose. Again, to give us an idea or impression that we know something about root canal given the fact that it is very complex, it's difficult to comprehend and understand, but still, we humans tend to give nomen uh, names, that is nomenclature or uh, classifications for sake of creating some coherent stories, for sake of better communication, especially during treatment procedure. If I say uh, the particular root canal uh, has type 4 vertices configuration, so based on that, you'll know how complex it is or how it might probably be uh, arranged inside the tooth. Right. So, this is what I'm trying to convey. So, first and foremost, as you can see, we'll start with a simple one, a classification of root canals based on cross-section. So, we have root canals upon cross-section of the tooth. They can be circular or round. They can be oval-shaped. They can be long oval. Or they can be flattened or ribbon-shaped. Or Mostly, they can be irregular, especially in case of molars. The rest of the shapes, you can find them in anterior teeth or premolars, but irregular mostly in case of premolar. So that's one classification we have, which is based on the cross-section of a root canal, cross-sectional shape of a root canal. And then we have vertices and veins. If you say veins, it's very easy to remember as well. So we have four types or four categories, type 1, 
type 2, type 3 and type 4. So in type 1 you can see there is only a single canal extending from the pulp chamber towards the apical foramen, right? So type 1 it is 1. Type 2 you have 2-1 two configuration, 2 canals ending into 1 canal and then exiting in the form of an apical foramen, through apical foramen. And then you have type 3 where you have 2-2 two, two configuration and then type 4 you have 1-2 configuration. So let's just make a note of the same here. So type 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2. So these are the configurations of root canals. In simple terms, that is how root canals are arranged in various teeth. It can be maxillary premolars, it can be mandibular premolars, it can be mesial buccal root of maxillary first molar or mesial root of mandibular first molar, lower mandibular first molar or lower mandibular second molar, right? So, these kind of configurations can be found. When it comes to, so that's veins in brief, right? 1, 2, 1, 2, 2 and 1, 2. Relatively easy for us to kind of remember. If at all there is a question like the root canal shows veins type 3 configuration, which means is it 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2? So, you must be able to answer that, right? So, Weems configuration or classification of canals, we have 1, 2, 1, 2, 2 and 1, 2. When it comes to vertices, it is a bit complex to remember, but with practice, I'm sure it will be easy for you. So, as you can see, we have type 1 to type 8. So, 8 types of configurations given by vertices. So, type 1, as you can see, the single canal, right? one and in case of type two it is two one type three one two one type four two type five one two type six two one two type seven one two one two type eight three right so this configuration is mentioned by vertice as for the studies which has done way back in 1970 right so as you can see type 1 to type 8 so starting from type 1 you can see a single canal and then in case of type 2 two canals merging into a single canal and then exiting right the apex apical foramen type 3 you have one to one configuration type 4 two canals right completely two the best example which I can give you is the mesial root of mandibular second molar. Two canals on the mesial root, they are separate from the pulp chamber till they exit the root through apical foramen. So type 5, you have 1-2 configuration premolars. So type 6, you have 2-1-2 configuration. In fact, I'll briefly mention the teeth as well for your understanding and easy remembrance and correlation. Type 1 configuration usually seen in anterior teeth as well as lower premolars, right? Type 2 configuration is seen uh, in uh, usually mesobuccal root of maxillary first molar, right? Where you have MB2. So, in uh, such situations, you'll have this 2-1 configuration. So, type 3, again, it is seen in lower premolars, right? Also can be found in anterior sometimes, lower anteriors. Type 4 configuration is found just as I mentioned now, right? The mesial root of mandibular second molar. Type 5 configuration, usually 1 2 configuration in case of lower premolars, lower first premolar. Type 6 configuration in case of mesial root of lower first molar, where you have this 2 1 2 configuration, mesial buccal canal and mesial lingual canal, which are present on the mesial root of mandibular first molar. Whereas type 7 configuration is in case of lower premolars, mandibular first premolar again, where you have this 1, 2, 1, 2 configuration, one canal bifurcating into two and then merging into one and then bifurcating into two, very complex, mandibular first premolar. That's the reason why mandibular first premolar is considered to be an enigma to an endodontist. This is very, very important, right? And type 8, you have three canals from the pulp chamber till the apex. The best example which we can give is the mesial root of pandiblar first molar, where you'll have mesobuccal canal, middle mesial canal, mesolingual canal, right? So, this is some uh, classification types and the orientation of various root canals which I wanted to highlight in this particular video. And before I conclude, does the number of root canals correspond to the number of roots? So, let's leave this video with that particular question with a brief explanation related to the same. Usually, 
if there is one root there is one canal if there are two roots there are two canals this is something which we all understand right however there are some exceptions the best example which i can give you is couple of examples mesial buccal root of maxillary first molar where you have in the mesial buccal root a single root you can find most often two canals mb1 and mb2 which i'm sure some of you might know and when it comes to lower molars that is mandibular first molar the mesial side on the mesial root mostly you will find two canals as we discussed previously mesial buccal canal and mesial lingual canal sometimes even three canals middle mesial canal at the same time the distal root of mandibular first molar even though it's a single root you can find two canals right on the buccal as well as on the lingual aspect and along with that usually in mandibular anteriors including mandibular premolars the pulp chamber bifurcates into two and gives itself into two canals one canal on the buccal aspect the other canal on the lingual aspect so as you know mandibular anteriors including premolars they have single root however you frequently find two canals if at all two canals are present they are present buccolingually not mesodistally even the orientation is very important right so these are some exceptions or else in rest of the teeth one root if it is there it contains one canal right so i hope it's clear and i hope you'll remember the exceptions uh, since this is very very important in entrance point of view during viva as well as during your university exams what not right so this particular topic is important in dental anatomy perspective as well as in endodontic perspective so i taken up this topic keeping those objectives in mind so that will be beneficial for you whether you're studying dental anatomy or whether you're studying endodontics right so i hope it's clear and before i conclude let me briefly summarize all the things which we have discussed so far root can also nothing but pulpal spaces extending into the radicular portion of a tooth whereas the same spaces pulpal spaces present in the kernel aspect of a tooth are called as pulp chambers as you know so this basic nomenclature is very important and there shouldn't be any room for error or confusion whatsoever and along with that we we even mentioned about accessory and lateral canals and the following statement that is all lateral canals are accessory canals but all accessory canals are not lateral canals is it true or false if true why do you think it's true if false why do you think it's false you can let me know in the comment section below and along with that we've seen about uh, you know apical foramen accessory foramen so on and so forth but most importantly the focus of this video is root canal classification so we have different classifications presented by vertice veins and we have another classification based on the cross sectional shape of a canal so this is quite simple to remember right so we have circular cross section and we have this oval shaped cross sections long oval flattened or ribbon shaped irregular and we have this veins classification which is we have four categories or four types type 1 to type 4 so 1 2 1 2 2 1 2 configuration of root canals whereas in case of vertices we have type 1 to type 8 1 2 1 1 to 1 2 1 2 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 3 right so this is again a root canal configuration one way of easily remembering vertices classification which i personally follow is i divide these eight types into three categories the first category starts from type 1 to type 3 the second category uh, for sake of my uh, easy remembrance it starts from type 4 to type 7 and the rest will be third category so the first category with 1 the second category 2 third category 3 so this in a way probably will simplify your way of remembering this vertices classification right so 1 2 1 1 2 1 2 1 2 2 1 2 1 2 1 2 and then you have your third category that is type 8 so uh, you can use your own uh, imagination or your own way of uh, simplifying things to ultimately what we all need is to easily remember this classification that's what matters right so this is in brief about the classifications of root canals and also i mentioned about the number of root canals do they correspond to the number of roots mostly yes however there are some exceptions mesial buccal root of maxillary first molar the single root can have two canals mb1 and mb2 mesial root of mandibular first molar so mesial root single root can have two canals mesial buccal canal mesial lingual canal sometimes there can be third canal which is middle mesial canal at the same time the distal root of mandibular first molar can have two canals occasionally again on the buccal and lingual orientation 
right? Distobuccal, distolingual. And even mandibular anteriors, including premolars, the pulp chamber usually bifurcates and gives rise to two canals. Even though mandibular anteriors and premolars have single root, there can be two canals arranged or oriented bucolingually, right? So, this is in brief about root canals, the canal classification and the number of root canals in various teeth, right? I hope this information is helpful and if you have any further queries or you need any further assistance, you can always get back through mail at proudtobedentist at gmail.com 24 by 7. I wish you all the best. Love you all.